The MCAT was easily the most academically stressful time of my life, but after going through it, there are so many things that I want to share with you that will make your journey so much easier. Over my two months of study time, I made small but steady increments, starting at a 498 to ultimately scoring a 517 on test day. So we're going to break this video up into a couple sections just to keep things organized. First, we're going to go over how to study the most efficient way possible so you're not stuck having to relearn material that you've already gone through. Second, we're going to go over how to review practice questions the right way. Third, I'm going to talk about the importance of trying different things during your prep. Fourth, I'm going to talk about how many free resources there are on the internet and how you can access them. Fifth, I'm going to talk about the importance of mental health and kind of establishing a support system. Finally, we're going to talk about how to treat the MCAT like a job and establish kind of a schedule to keep your time managed. So if you think that any of this is going to be helpful, a like to the video and a sub to the channel would be awesome. On with the video. So first, let's start with studying. You know those Kaplan review books? So when I started my prep, I literally would sit on the bed or even lie down on the bed and just read the book like a storybook. Spoiler alert, MCAT review books are not great storybooks. What I realized like two weeks after I was doing this approach, everything would just kind of fall out of my head and this passive revision of the book wasn't helping me at all. And I was frustrated, man. I'd spent two weeks reviewing this content and I wasn't remembering anything. And I found this flashcard program called Anki. Now, if you watched any videos about MCAT or medical school or anything, you've definitely heard of Anki. But this program gave me an active way to go through content and it forced me to actively recall as I studied. For example, if I had a flashcard that asked me, what is a chiral carbon? I would have to dig into my brain and, and pull out the information about chiral carbons. And that process of pulling this information out of my brain basically formed like a deeper neural connection with that content, enabling me to summon it easier in the future. And that's the basis of active recall. You're basically forming strong neural connections with the content by actively seeking it out of your brain. And this will help you study and help you not have to go over material multiple times. Now, I don't want to spend too much time boring you with the science of active recall, but whatever study method you use, you want to make sure that you're actively recalling while you're going through content. Different ways you can do this, you can use Quizlet, you can use Anki, which is what I personally recommend. But if you find yourself, you're someone that likes to handwrite notes, you can also try something called Cornell notes. In Cornell notes, you basically take your piece of paper and fold it in half. And on the right side, you just write, you know, your normal notes. And then on the left side, you write questions that are coming from content on the right side. So then whenever you review those notes, you just cover the right side and then you ask yourself the questions on the left side. So when you ask those questions, you're forcing your brain to actively recall the content on the right side. And then you can check your answers after you're done. So that's study strategy number one, active recall. The next one is spaced repetition. Now active recall is super powerful, but when not paired with spaced repetition, it's not as strong. And I'm gonna show you this graph here to illustrate that. Taking a look at this forgetting curve, you're pretty likely to forget the information pretty quickly if you just do it once. But as you can see, every time you review material again, the chance of you remembering over time increases immensely. This is why you want to continue reviewing material over spaced intervals to make sure that it sticks in your mind over long periods of time. And you know, you and I are probably procrastinators on typical tests that we have for classes and stuff. And that usually works, right? But when you have to study for an exam, that's two, three, four months past when you're currently studying, you have to make sure that the things that you're studying today will stick until you take that exam months down the line. And that's why this is really important. To do active recall and space repetition, I really loved using Anki because it basically takes care of all the work for you and figures out what days it needs to show you particular flashcards. And all you have to do is open the program and just review them. And I'm not exaggerating this one bit, but active recall and space repetition really changed the game of how I studied for the MCAT. And that is what enabled me to make the score advantage that I did. And you're going to keep hearing this from medical students and beyond. A lot of people use Anki in medicine to do this kind of review just because of how much material there is to cram in your head. So that's a brief overview of some of the study techniques to use for the MCAT. I'll include links in the description with a little bit more information if you're trying to find more. All right, so next up is reviewing questions. So when I started doing practice questions and reviewing the ones that I got wrong, I'd basically just be like, ah, oh, that's the right answer. Moving on, no moving on. I realized that when I would just move on from these questions, I would make the same mistake again, and again, and again. And there's a rule that I saw somewhere that it should take at least double the time that it took to take the questions to review them. Remember, when it comes to doing practice questions, it's more about the quality of your review 
than the quantity of how many questions that you did. Basically, you wanna understand why you missed a question. So you wanna ask yourself, you know, was there a content gap? Did you misunderstand a graph? Did you misunderstand a passage? Were you 50-50 between two answer choices? Did you just make a stupid mistake? You know, you wanna quantify and see how many questions fall under each of these categories. That way, you can see if there are any particular question types that you miss more than others. I just use a normal spreadsheet to do this and I'll include the template that I used down below. All right, so number three is try new things. Now, I'm not talking about going skydiving during the middle of your MCAT prep. No, I'm talking about trying new strategies while you're studying. I'll give you an example. When I was practicing cars passages, I remember that one of the main strategies that people recommend is to write down like a quick summary of each paragraph and then you know, at the end, just write a little bit of a summary. And so I tried so hard to make this approach work, but every time I did, I would just run out of time and I wouldn't even be able to answer the questions correctly. But since it worked for so many other people, I thought that it had to work for me. So I just kept beating a dead horse and thought that eventually this approach would work for me, but it didn't. Thankfully, I finally gave up and tried a different approach where I just kind of read the passage actively and kind of summarized things in my own mind and connected different paragraphs. And that approach worked so much better in my mind and helped me perform a lot better on the passages. One of my regrets is that if I kept an open mind earlier and tried this approach earlier on, I could have practiced more with it and became better at using it to attack passages. And there are similar strategies like this to different sections of the MCAT. So it's really important that you take time to try different approaches and see what works best for you. Keeping an open mind during this process helps immensely. You might be like, Arvin, where do I find these strategies? Well, the good thing is that there are strategy guides all over the internet, especially the pre-med subreddit, and everyone's just really helpful. Building off that idea that people are awesome and share their tips and advice, there are so many free resources online for the MCAT. I actually made this video a while back with a compilation of different free MCAT resources on the internet. And on that document, you can find over 10 free practice exams, thousands of free practice questions, Anki decks, strategy guides, content videos, and even more. I'll link the document in the description and you just have to check it out. Having a bunch of different perspectives on any single piece of content is really important because, you know, I found myself sometimes not understanding something from reading the book, but then when I watched this video from a random Indian dude on the internet, everything just clicked all of a sudden. Just like that, there are so many different resources on the internet that present information in all kinds of different ways and different things might resonate better with you. And now, a topic that people don't really like talking about, mental, mental health, health. Okay. okay? In the two months that I studied for the MCAT, I think that my mental health was kind of in shambles. It was during quarantine and I was at home with my parents, but I barely saw them. And even when I did, I was just in a bad mood all the time when I was studying. I tried like those meditation apps like Headspace or the other ones, but just it didn't help. What I realize now is the importance of having a strong support system while you're studying for this beast of an exam. It's really easy to isolate yourself, but it's important that you keep contacts with your friends and your family and you know, talk to them every once in a while just to get your mind off of things. I remember I also had one of my friends that was studying for the exam at the same time and he and I just kind of supported each other and it was really nice having someone that understood what you were going through. It was also during quarantine so I wasn't able to see people so I made a lot of friends on Discord of people that were also studying for the MCAT so you can find people online too that'll understand you and support you throughout your journey. So yeah, if I had to do it again, I would make sure to utilize my support system in order to keep my mind in a good place to help me study better. Another thing that's really important for your mental health is treating the MCAT like a job with a fixed schedule. When I was studying, man, I felt like I had to put every waking moment into studying for the MCAT. Otherwise, I would just be wasting my time. What I realize now is setting a specific schedule and giving yourself certain hours of the day where you might be working out or spending time with friends or family is just so important in order to keep your mind ready for the next day. Also, sleep is really important, so make sure you set like a strict sleeping time to make sure you're ready to study the next morning. Some people are studying for the MCAT alongside classes and it can be really hard to balance on top of it. But what I tell people is to make sure that you treat your MCAT studying like a class. And so you time block certain blocks throughout the week where it's protected MCAT study time and you make sure that you study during that time and treat it 
like an actual class with mandatory attendance. Scheduling is also really important. I think the first thing that you need to decide is if you wanna study for the MCAT full-time without any other commitments or part-time, you know, working a job or also taking classes. Making a strong study schedule is really important for the MCAT and we don't have the time in this video to go way too in depth with it, but I'll include some resources in the description to help you with that. But yeah, those are my six tips. And yeah, guys, at the end of the day, studying for this exam is extremely hard but you're gonna learn so much about yourself and you're gonna gain like a newfound appreciation of everyone and all the doctors that have gone through this process. And you know, watching this video, you're one step closer to your goal of being a doctor. You got this. The MCAT is hard and the MCAT is important. And to do well in this exam, it matters how you prep and not just how much you prep. And that's why we here at the Princeton Review have developed a work harder and not smarter philosophy we will help you achieve maximum results in minimum time. <laughs> how, how do I remember all of that?